Hi everyone. Well, the sky is cloudy once again. As a matter of fact, some light rain is falling. I just dumped two inches of rain out of my rain gauge from yesterday and overnight. I have the telescope under cover because of the wet weather conditions. But prior to the rain system coming in, I did have some clear skies and after midnight, the moon was out of the picture. So I was able to capture the Horsehead Nebula and I captured it in uh, the, with a monochrome camera, but using a red filter, a green filter, and a blue filter. How do I combine those together to get this color picture? Stay tuned. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. I would like to thank all my subscribers. I'm up to 1,300 now. That's wonderful, and I thank you very much for hitting that subscribe button. If you're new to this channel, I do a lot of astrophotography in my own backyard. I call it the Heavenly Backyard uh, Garden because of the, uh, well, the garden back here and the telescope. So it's heavenly and it's a garden. Uh, but I do a lot of uh, uh, videos about what I do with the telescopes. I have a couple of telescopes. The one under cover right now, I'm going to show you a picture of that that I took before the clouds moved in, is a uh, Orion ED80T telescope. That's an 80 millimeter scope, uh, 3.1 inches refractor scope with a uh, Orion 0.8 field reducer. So that brings the F6 ratio down to F4.8. That gives me a nice wide field of view. And over in my eastern sky is where the Orion Nebula pops up. And just near the Orion Nebula in the uh, belt, near the belt of Orion, is a, uh, a, a nebulosity of, of gaseous uh, structure called the Horsehead Nebula. And it's always been my goal to get a good view and a good picture and a good exposure of the Horsehead Nebula. It's one of my favorites. Uh, since I started into astrophotography about oh, 2016, uh, the Horsehead Nebula was one of my first targets that I wanted to get. And the first several times I attempted to get at it, I found out something. It is very dim. It takes a lot of exposure time to capture this nebula. Well, I'm learning a lot more on how to take the longer time lapse photography and how to do the more stacking and the processing in PixInsight and Photoshop. Well, let me stop talking about it. and Let's go upstairs and let me show you how I did all this. Well, a lot has changed since I started into astrophotography. That was about 2016. Uh, learning the stacking programs, that was a big one right then and there. And it has improved dramatically since then. Uh, right now, I still uh, rely heavily on Deep Sky Stacker. It's a wonderful program. Also, PixInsight uh, does a great job in stacking. And there's other stacking programs out there as well. Also, the improvements in uh, post-processing, such as PixInsight uh, and um, uh, Photoshop. Photoshop CC, which is an online uh, kind of like version of Photoshop. Anyway, it does a fantastic job in helping bring out the colors and bring out the nebulosity and the clarity of the stars. I'm going to show you some of the examples that I uh, featured with the uh, Horsehead Nebula that I recorded. Let's see, it was on uh, November 24th, actually 23rd, 24th, and the 26th. Most of the uh, imagery was on the night of the 26th. That was a good, clear night. So let's get into it. Let's start stacking. First of all, that's the first step after. Uh, actually, it's not the first step. The first step is starting Nina. I want to show you a quick how, uh, setup of how I uh, set up Nina. All right, the first thing I need to do is open up my remote connection to the computer, to the telescope, and it's called Telescope 2, and I'm going to connect. There it connects right over here, and it takes a little bit of connection time before it's ready to go. I usually get a couple hello from Windows when I first start it up. Anyway, uh, the first thing I want to do is open up uh, the telescope. And that's CPWI. There's hello, privacy update, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, connect to the scope. And it's going to connect momentarily. Sometimes it uh, waits. There it goes. All right. And uh, then I can go to Nina. Nighttime imaging in astronomy
Okay, load the profile, and this is the one I have set up, the Orion ED80T. And I can go full screen here. Uh, filters, the red, the blue, the green, the HA, and the luminous. And uh, I can set all these controllers on. And uh, we want to start guiding. Uh, slew to the target, do a plate solve, and slew to, and then uh, plate solve, and then once it's solved, uh, center it, make sure it's centered. It does another plate solving on that. And then it will go into the autofocus mode if you have it on start. And then also you can uh, do it on a filter change. And then all you have to do is hit go, and it's ready to go. I want to show you what I got here. Um, okay, there's the view right there. Now, see, there's the flame nebula I was talking about. I didn't want that in my shot. So what I did is I pulled this down to right there. And then I hit uh, recenter the image. I love Nina. It, it makes life so much easier. I did a lot of my first astrophotography using SharpCap and Altair Capture, which are not bad programs. Uh, and they're getting better as they go along as well, but uh, I, Nina is really, really nice. It incorporates just about everything into this. Now, one of the things that I was aiming for, um, I, I didn't want so much of this area in here. I wanted more of this nebulosity out here, and of course the, the, the horse head itself right, right in here, and this nebulosity here. But, so I pushed it over just a little bit further. Uh, in this direction, and then I recentered it again. So I, I wanted to get this area as well into my shot, and uh, that's what the um, sequence set is all set for to do. And then all I have to do is hit go, and everything is off and running. So let's go back over into Deep Sky Stacker, and uh, what I let's say let's open up the uh, the red files first the red light you have to do each individual one the red the green the blue and uh, I opened up these files here yeah check all and uh, let's take a look at one of them that's it and that can stretch it a little bit in pics and are in um, deep sky stacker and there you can barely see it but this is the red light and then I add my dark files I have a master dark these were 300 seconds a piece, so five minutes. There it is right there. And then uh, I took a lot of flats uh, with the um, flat wizard in Nina, and that really is nice too. It takes your flats and your darks all on the uh, filters, all in one uh, setting. Once you have it set, you just hit go, and it takes all the flats in all the different uh, filters and the, uh, the dark flats as well. Anyway, there is the master flat for the red camera. Or the red uh, and before, filter. Before we hit uh, register uh, the pictures, uh, it's important to go into a couple other sets. This is a monochrome uh, camera, so I have to make sure that Deep Sky Stacker knows that. So in the settings, uh, instead of using the color images, I have to go and change the uh, settings. So the stacking settings. Um, In a color image, the align RGB channels uh, should be clicked. Black and white, unclick this one or uncheck it if you want to call it that. And then also in the um, in the raw fits uh, setting, uh, go into the fits files. And if the uh, color matrix bear pattern is clicked on, you need to click that off. It has to be in a uh, black and white mode. Um, monochrome mode and then hit apply and said okay and then now you can stack I found out that not doing that you get some really weird results once it's finished I go into PixInsight which is where right here and these are the results there's the red there's the green and there's the blue now the next thing I do is stretch it there's the blue there's the green. You can barely see the nebula. Of course, the green was after a meridian flip, so there you can see it's upside down. And then the red, uh, see what that looks like when you stretch it. Whoa, <laughs> you can see there a lot of red uh, associated with this uh, nebula. So this is just with the red filter here. So now the next step I do, I can minimize these, these, and 
these. Now you can do this in Deep Sky Stacker. It's a little bit of extra work, um, but it's easier to do. Uh, just take the uh, stack files and go into uh, PixInsight and use the star alignment tool there. And what I can do here is uh, I can click, check either uh, uh, views or files. Um, views are these images over here. Uh, so I'm gonna use that. And uh, for the red camera, I mean, <laughs> uh, the red light on the camera, I'm gonna use uh, the Horsehead Nebula November 26 red. And right there. And that, okay, that's gonna be my reference image right there. And now the other one, add the additional views. I'm gonna add the um, horse head blue and the horse head green, okay? And there they are. Now, what this is gonna do, as soon as I hit the, uh, the global go, it will align all these so that they'll be all perfectly uh, aligned and so they can stack uh, one on top of each other in the RGB channels. So here we go. All right, I can minimize this. And uh, let's see, the green registered. See, they're all registered now. That's it. And then the blue, that's it. Of course, the red is still the red right there. And then what I do is I go into um, LRGB combination uh, in PixInsight. And once again, you select your images. And uh, for the red, I want red. Say OK. And then for the blue, or green, let's go green since it's RGB. Uh, oops. Pick on the uh, green registered. OK. And then for the blue, we want to go with the blue register. Right there. OK. And then you just hit OK here. Let her rip. And you should get something of a color image here. Uh, there is your red nebulosity. And you can see that other nebulosity that I was looking for. And, uh, and the bright stars. Okay, that's I, I can do a little bit more in, in PixInsight, but I also like to do that little bit more over in Photoshop. So opening up Photoshop. Now, opening up in Photoshop, the first thing I do is I do a little color stretching uh, and background um, darkening and so forth. Uh, and, and, and this is basically done through the filter, camera raw filter. And there you can change things around. You can uh, change the contrast, uh, change the highlights, uh, shadows, all these different uh, things you can play with. And, and, and believe me, sometimes you can spend, it seems like hours back and forth with these and uh, this texture one is very nice but also the clarity you can uh, play with that and the, uh, the, the dehazing it you can bring out nebulosity or bring in blacks what have you uh, and you can also play with the colors over in here uh, bring them up or down as you got the saturation points uh, you can see that's a little bit too much obviously and you can change the luminance uh, in that color channel in there. See, that brings it out even a little bit more. And then you go into, um, oh, you can do the uh, uh, adjustments in the image um, tab and go selective colors. And then once again, you can go bring in that color back and forth. You can, you can do all these. And, and, and what I've done is I uh, already did this and this was the next step after doing the first color arrangement in the first phase and then into the selected colors I went into that and then into more uh, denoising uh, into that and finally uh, coming up with this image right here so <laughs> there you can see uh, a nice view of the horsehead nebula so you know when you go from the beginning to the end uh, it's quite a difference as a matter of fact um, you saw the uh, the black and white images, and uh, it's amazing that these three images here are actually the color image uh, of the nebula itself when it's all done and uh, finished. And there you go. I have another one over here that I changed. Uh, a little bit different maneuver maneuverability in uh, Photoshop, 
that's too much shock, right? And, and that's that's too foggy. Uh, you can see I went from there to there, and then the other one went to there, and then I saved it a close-up view there. That's that is that image right there, and um, actually not it's 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 that image right there. This one is the second one. I don't know which one I like better. I'll, do I like this one? Or do I like that one? I mean, this got the nice blues. Uh, but let's go with it further out because you can see some of my tracking errors. Uh, there's the second one. There's the first one. I think I got too many stars in here. Um, but uh, I like the color better in here. And that's, uh, I don't know. Which one do you like? This one or this one? I like it with the less stars in there. But the object was this, the horse head itself, which is a big puff of dust particles. Some sort of convection in space going on over here, causing that thing to rise up like that. Um, anyway. By the way, you can find me on my web page, uh, savannapat.name, and you click on astronomy. Uh, on the upper right tab there and it goes straight into my Heavenly Backyard Astronomy page on my website and there I uh, have lots of uh, uh, information from the Heavenly Backyard, the, uh, you know, information about the planets that I uh, have shot in here, uh, the galaxies all from my backyard, uh, globular clusters, nebulae, um, there's the horse head that I just did and there are some of the pictures right there. Uh, actually heavenlybackyardastro.com uh, is my website. And then you can also find me on my uh, Facebook page, Weather and Nature Facebook page, or you can find me on Heavenly Backyard Astronomy page, right there. And that's at uh, Savannah Backyard. It's easy to remember, isn't it? Savannah Backyard. I still plan to do some more uh, on the horse head nebula, and there's a lot of nebulas around it. Just to the lower portion of this picture is the famous flame nebula, uh, which I wanted to crop out of this view because it's just so bright. It has a tendency to block out the, the uh, reds in the uh, horse head nebula that it, it itself. But meanwhile, just remember the, the universe is just filled with majestic wonders, all in a sky near you. Unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone. <laughs>